And this is where we come into the idea of hell. And this is one of those things that, that, that at this time in our culture, um, people, they don't like that. They don't like the idea of hell. They don't like the idea of punishment. I don't know how many times I've heard people say, basically, that God is just mean. He's a big meanie. He's cruel. How dare he send people to hell? That the whole idea of hell is wrong and that God is bad and we should not believe it because it is bad and wrong. And they just love throwing out those words as if they mean something. But here's the thing, we don't bail on God just because maybe there's a belief or a teaching in Scripture that we find uncomfortable or difficult or confusing. If you remember, there were times that Jesus would have a hard teaching and the crowd didn't know what to do with it and they left him. In John chapter 6, <clears throat> just such an occasion, verse 67, Jesus had just given a teaching to the crowd and it says that they walked away grumbling because they didn't like what he taught. And then Jesus said to the 12, so he turns to his disciples and he says, do you also want to go away? Verse 68, but Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And so whenever we encounter things in the Bible that sometimes we don't understand, they seem difficult, they may even make us uncomfortable, a hard teaching, where are we going to go? Because Christ alone has the words of eternal life. So you don't like the fact that God punishes evil. And that's one thing I struggle with. It's a hard one. But what are the other options? You know, all the other religions of the world, the ones that might say, hey, we're not going to, you know, send people to a place like hell. There is no judgment. Yeah, but every single one of them it's not about grace. It's not about faith. It's not about the mercy and love of God. It's about you better get it right and behave, and you're going to work your way into being good enough to get the reward. But not Christ. Christ says, I recognize your weakness and your frailty and your need, and he extends grace and pays the price for your sin. Say, well, I'm just going to reject God. I just don't want to believe in such a being, so I'm just going to reject him. Okay, well, welcome to atheism where there is no meaning to life. So it's called nihilism. That life is ultimately meaningless. There is no great moral system. There, there's no good or evil. There is no justice. It just is what is. And all that suffering and all that evil and all that horrible things that people do to each other, doesn't matter. Help someone in need or push them down in the ditch. There is no difference if there is no God. It's all meaningless. Whereas, in fact, what the Scripture teaches is that hell is justice being done. Our rebellion against God earns us punishment and being cast away from Him. And really, isn't that what unrepentant sinners want? They don't want to be around God. I mean, that's the whole point. They go, I don't want you, God. I don't want to worship you. I don't want to do things your way. I don't want to follow your rules. I will be the captain of my ship. I will be the master of my life. And I will decide what I will do. And I don't want you involved. And so God says, okay, as you wish. Heard one time, Somebody said that there are two kinds of people. There's those people who say to God, your will be done. And there's, there's those people to whom God says, okay, your will be done. Have it your way. Actually, in the book of Romans, chapter 1, we see several instances where this very idea is put forth where God says, okay, that's how you want it. Have it your way. Romans 1.24 says, God gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. He said, okay, that's what you want. Go for it. Romans 1.26, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. Romans 1.28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they didn't want to think about Him. They didn't want to consider Him. They didn't want God to have to be a part of their life at all. It says that God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Okay. You don't want to do things God's way. You don't want to consider God. You don't want to follow God. You don't want to think about God. Fine. Go do it your way. This is what's referred to by theologians as God's passive wrath. 
where he's not actively punishing. He's saying, okay, you don't want to live the way I designed the world to go? Fine, go off, have it your way. And the consequences and the pain and the heartache and the suffering that you endure because of it, that's all yours too. Have at it. And so for those people who reject God, who don't want him, don't want his ways, don't want his rules, don't want his presence, heaven would be hell to them. And since they choose to be apart from God, he gives them their desire. Life without God is literally hell. See, we, we tend to have in our culture this idea of uh, hell as being, you know, we get it from uh, like Dante's Inferno where there's like demons, you know, torturing people on racks and just flames all over the place. And it's just, no, what I think it is, is it's life continued on without God. Heaven is going to be life with God. Okay, well, we're not going to float around on clouds in white robes, playing harps, singing kumbaya for eternity we will have a new heaven and a new earth, a new life to pursue, to live, to go, and to do. Right? This is the dress rehearsal. If this amazing world that he created, where we have all of this that we enjoy and we do, our life there is going to be physical as well. And it's going to be better and greater than what we have here. There will be life going on day after day, with God. And conversely, in hell, it's going to be life without God. People are going to go about their lives. They're going to have life. They're going to have relationships. They're going to do what people do, only there will be no God. It's going to be a place where the law of God, the love, the grace, the care, the compassion, the kindness is all gone. And it is the selfishness and pride and desires of mankind that reigns and rules think what hell is going to be is going to be eternity of what we saw before the days of Noah, where the Bible says that all the thoughts of man were only evil continually. Life without God is what they want, and that's what they're going to get. 